Hi, my name's Scott, the Miniature Maniac, and today we're building an ultra portable miniature painting case. What up, mini family? Oftentimes, I go to local game stores to paint miniatures with my friends for about one to three hours, and I don't have a good way to transport the tools and materials and miniatures that I need for a paint session of that length. Oftentimes, miniature painters, when given this scenario, will use a toolbox, but I don't really like toolboxes because they're big and clunky and they aren't designed for miniature painting. So what often happens is you design inside the confines of a toolbox, a space that works for all your tools and all your minis. But instead of designing inside of a toolbox, why don't we just scratch build one? You know what that means. Carpentry! So the purpose of this case is to transport all the essential gear that you need for a hobbing session of around one to three hours. We'll need to consider storage for paints, paint brushes, palettes, a lot of peas, clippers, X-Acto knife, super and plastic glue, and as a bonus, it'd be cool to have a light source of some kind. It isn't essential because the stores that I often go to have lights there, but if you didn't, it'd be cool to address that issue. This isn't the end-all, be-all miniature painting case. It's designed for a short session. It'd be the miniature painter's equivalent of uh, a purse? Wait, no, that's not right. The first thing I did was source all my materials for this project. I imagine like a briefcase like construction that you open and nothing falls out. Everything's kind of like fastened into place. So I imagine elastic bands for paints, pluck foam for miniatures, maybe some Kaizen foam for the tools, which we'll get into later. And I also found poplar as my wood. Poplar, unlike my last carpentry project, is a lot softer and easier to shape. It also takes paint really well, which would be great because we're gonna be painting this case later. I learned from my previous mistakes on this project in that I sourced my material and the dimensions of my material before designing the project so I can design around what I have, which makes it easier for me in my somewhat limited workshop. While I take measurements of my materials, I wanna to talk to you about today's sponsor and that's Frontier Wargaming. If you're not necessarily interested in scratch building your own mobile paint case, or you're looking for something that's more feature rich, Frontier Wargaming makes a beautiful product that's got you covered in both cases. The case is made from stained Baltic birch and the pieces are cut with a laser CNC for razor sharp precision. The case features three paint racks that can hold up to 96 or 54 Citadel paints, five bits and supply boxes, one box for brushes and tools, a tray with six miniature holders, an adjustable shoulder strap, and an optional add-on LED light. You can also laser engrave a sick design on your case. They sent me one with my logo laser engraved into it. If you'd like to pick one up for yourself or a loved one for this holiday season, you can find a link in the description below. Additionally, if you use the coupon code MINIAC at checkout, you get an additional $10 off. Thanks for sponsoring this video of Frontier Wargaming. Back to the build. I started to map out my tools on top of my paints to see if I could work with the area available to me. The wet palette seemed a little large, so I may need to resolve that later. Once I had that figured out, I could move on to my 3D design. I wanted to make a design that didn't use fasteners like nails or screws because that would be a fun challenge and also that's the ultimate woodworking flex. I put rabbits in the corners and dados in the middle of the sideboards to hold my dividers. I had my wood and materials sitting in front of me that I could take measurements from while I was designing it in 3D and this helped a lot to make sure I was designing something that could be created without needing to make 5,000 trips to Home Depot. I've put the STL file of my 3D design in the description below so you can check it out if you want to. Then I laid out my cuts on my wood based on my 3D design and got to cutting. The first cuts I made were the easiest, cutting the sides to length. I used my miter saw and set up a stop block to get consistent cuts. Then I started to cut out my rabbits and dados with a router. I used the straight edge guide of my router and a piece of wood to guide the cut. Not that you can see what's going on. You'll just have to believe me. Everything up until this point was going smoothly, which makes sense because at this point I've literally made one cut. <laughs> Whenever I use a router, the two times I've used this one, I feel like I'm using it wrong. 
I have this massive router on top of a 2.5 inch wide board and it tends to fall over when I get close to the edge, meaning the bit digs into the side of the wood. Maybe I need a smaller router with less weight for delicate operations like this. Or maybe I need a table saw, which would make very light work of this kind of operation. Hey, wait a second, what's this? My dad actually gave me a table saw and the first thing I did when I got it home was take it completely apart to see how it worked. And then when I realized how hard it was to put it back together, I kind of just let it sit there. This was four years ago? Moving on! Not shown here is me cleaning up all these joints with my chisels. Poplar is a pretty soft wood as previously mentioned, so it was a pretty simple fix. I used a quarter inch straight cut bit for my dado slots on my router and that seemed to make a pretty nice fitting joint. Now time for things to go wrong. My case is an inch and a quarter wide and the wood I bought is 2.5 inches wide. So I figured I'd cut the joinery first then rip the boards in half and the joinery would line up perfectly on both sides. I understand that the sides won't be equal in width because the kerf of the saw blade, but that doesn't really matter. They don't need to be equal. The perfect tool for this ripping operation is a table saw, but mine is uh, out of commission. So I use my circular saw. This is a little tricky because the platform of the saw itself is wider than the board. Typically you can use a makeshift fence and clamp it down to a sacrificial surface and the fence itself acts as a clamp for the wood you're cutting. In this case, the fence is separate from the wood I'm cutting, so I need to think of a way to clamp down the wood I'm cutting. I stole an idea from Dustin Penner where he applies tape to the surfaces of the wood that are going to adhere to something and then uses glue and accelerator to adhere it. The tape acts as a sacrificial service that is later discarded. So I glued together my two sideboards and then glued them to the surface of my bench and set up my fence. So the wood is fastened by super glue and my fence is just clamped down. I glued the two pieces of wood together to hopefully have the best chance of a consistent rip across all the wood in my case, so I cut them at the same time. I made the cut and the glue tape trick worked great, but guess what guys? I didn't perfectly line up my fence so my cut wasn't straight and now all my corners are messed up. I figured I could fix this with a hand plane later so I moved on to cutting the dividers. I dry fitted everything together with clamps and then cut the dividers to fit. And once those were ready to go, I glued everything up. You may notice a diagonal clamp, which looks kind of weird. That's there to pull the whole assembly into square so each corner is closer to 90 degrees. I did this for both halves of my case. Once those were dry, I moved on to the hand plane step that wouldn't be necessary if I had a table saw. To make sure each board was flat or at least flatter. I checked each corner with the ruler, but it still had a little bit of a wobble. Maybe at this point, it's important to mention how cases are typically made because I am not doing a conventional approach to a case at all and it's causing me issues. Typically what you do to make a case is you make a hollow cube that's fully enclosed first and then you cut the cube in half on one of the third lines so the case is fatter on one side and skinnier on the other. You do this so that when you install a handle, it can be in the middle of the case and not be directly on top of the cut line. You also make a cube first and then cut it in half because you ensure that the cube will go back together perfectly when you install hinges because at one point it was a perfect cube. But guess what the perfect tool is for cutting a cube in half? That's right, a table saw. And guess what I don't have? So I had to improvise. Before attaching my lids, I did some sanding because it'd be hard to reach some of these areas when the lids were attached. In all honesty, I should have probably done this before assembling all together. It would have been a lot easier then. For my lids, I'm using eighth inch thick MDF. I traced out the shapes of my box on the wood and then cut it oversized with my circular saw and then used a flush trim bit on my router to make the lid perfectly fit the box. After that, I attached a piano hinge to one side of the case and then attached brass clasps to the other side. This thing is starting to look like something. Something ugly, but something at least. <laughs> the final bit of carpentry would be to make a handle. I used the same poplar that I used for the wood and I drew and cut out a basic handle shape with my jigsaw. The jigsaw left quite a rough finish, so I had to sand the handle a lot to make it usable. I figured I'd install the handle with eighth inch diameter through dowels into my case. 
I kept forgetting that poplar is soft and I busted open one of the parts of my handle, but it's okay. It was an easy fix and I was much more gentle on the other dowel. I cut the receiving holes in my box and installed my handle with a little bit of clamping pressure. That's all the carpentry done. Now on to the internals. My normal wet palette was too large for this, so I decided to make a smaller one out of styrene. It's just another box with a lid, except this time I use plastic glue and X-Acto knives, and it's a heck of a lot easier to make. I made sure to check for leaks with some water. I can cut down the sponge that I use for my normal wet palette, and bang, a sleek little wet palette. Now I started to work on my Kaizen foam. Kaizen foam is special because it has multiple layers, and the purpose of it is to cut specific shapes into it and rip out the layers to the depth that you need. I started with what I thought would be easy, my small wet palette. I had quite a hard time getting the foam to come out in layers. It seemed to want to tear a lot. I ended up just cutting all the way through. My wet palette was almost the width of the foam anyways. I thought maybe the smaller shapes would be easier, so I moved on to my brushes. While this was a little bit simpler, it still wasn't super easy. At some point, I realized that I could probably fit all my tools that I'm laying out inside my wet palette box and save a lot of space, but that would make my case a secret agent sexy, so I decided to cut all the shapes I needed. My idea for a light source was a headlamp. Don't look at me like that, I know what you're thinking. God, a headlamp isn't a chick magnet, dude. Well, you're already at a gaming store, painting tiny plastic toy soldiers surrounded by other people painting tiny plastic toy soldiers, our chances are slim to none. Sadly, the headlamp is a little bit too thick to fit. Oh, thank God. But also my plastic glue is a little too thick. I'll need to find one that's slimmer for my case. I think dialing in the exact dimensions makes the build a little bit more difficult, but also in this case, I would have avoided some problems if I just oversized things by like 10%. I have a little space left in my foam. A little bit of that will go towards plastic glue that fits in the case, but what else would you guys bring to the hobby store for a short hobby session? What essential am I missing? To polish off the foam, I took some isopropyl alcohol and wiped away the Sharpie that I used to outline my parts. Next, I glued together some pluck foam with contact cement so I'd have one nice piece, and I had to think about how I was going to protect the minis when the box was closed. I didn't have a lot of box width to work with, so whatever solution I picked had to be very thin. I took some extra pluck foam and covered them in contact cement and put them into the squares where the mini would be. I then took some very thin plastic card and covered the whole surface in contact cement and when that dried and was still tacky, I stuck the plastic card down to the foam and pulled it out and then really stuck it down. Now I have a nice little shield that perfectly plugs into my existing foam to protect my minis once the case is closed. And it's thin. One fast and dirty paint job later, I have a nice little mobile painting case. I installed elastic bands in the paint area with staples to hold the paint down. For me, this was an awesome learning experience and also meets my needs pretty great. It's not super pretty because it's likely it'll get paint and super glue on it and it holds pretty much exactly what I need. I can honestly see myself using this case for its design purpose. How would you guys design this case differently? What essential tools would you put inside of it? You can comment below. But remember, if you're not into scratch building stuff and messing up a ton like I am, Frontier Wargaming makes an excellent product that you can find linked in the description below, along with that, a $10 off coupon if you use the word MINIAC at checkout. Well guys, thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you like miniature related carpentry projects, that's quite a niche. I have a playlist linked in the top right hand corner with a bunch of videos like that that you can check out. If you like the channel and you wanna support it, I have a Patreon account with a bunch of fun rewards such as a Discord server that you can join to hang out with me and chat about your miniature painting projects or anything you wanna chat about like why Luke Towen is the greatest YouTuber in the world. I also sell merchandise, such as a t-shirt with my logo on it that you can find linked in the description as well. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to pay my minis!